I found the best controller settings for chapter five, no matter what type of play style you have. Whether if you play claw or use two or four paddles on your controller or just have a standard grip, these settings will be absolutely perfect for you. And we're going to go through the whole settings menu and I'm going to give you a tutorial on each setting that you need to know about to help your gameplay. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. And we're going to hop right into our settings and we're going to start on our display settings. Now, if you're on console, you're not going to see everything here. Obviously, I am on PC and for my PC guys, make sure you're on full screen, not windowed full screen. Otherwise, you'll get 30 milliseconds of input delay and you don't want that. Then your resolution type, make sure you're on 1920 by 1080 and then VSync. Keep this off. This gives you terrible input delay. But for you console guys, there's a setting on this page that you need to change that I'll tell you about in a second. But for the PC guys, obviously right here, it says I'm on 60 FPS, but that's just not true. If you look up in that top right corner, I am actually on 237 FPS and I manually set that in the in-game settings. And if you want to see how to do that and why I do that, click the video right in the top right corner. It gets rid of a lot of input delay and it helps a lot with screen tearing if you play on PC. Then of course for rendering mode, you have to be on performance mode. It's the best rendering mode. Make sure you're on performance mode. Then also for my console guys, none of this graphics or any of the brightness or anything matters. This is all personal preference, whatever you want your game to look like. Sometimes I'll see some people saying that this helps get better FPS, but no, it does not. You don't need to mess with any of this unless you actually want to. And also for the console guys, you'll have a setting somewhere in here that will say motion blur. Make sure you also have that turned off. That'll help your FPS and your input delay on console a lot. But for me, I'm obviously on performance mode, so you won't even see it on my menu. But for the rest of PC guys, uh, make sure you come down here and you turn on views distance on near and then textures on low. Then the last one, report performance stats. Make sure you have this disabled. And now we're going to move on to the sound settings. So at the very top, obviously, all of this is personal preference, depending on what type of system you use. But one setting I do recommend changing is putting your sound quality on low. Turning your sound quality on low will help your FPS if you're on a low end PC or console. So make sure if your specs aren't that good on your PC or you're on console to turn this on low. I even have a pretty decent computer and my specs are pretty good, but I even keep this on low as well. All this changes is the sound of the pump shotgun, the spaz, and the footsteps and the rest of the sounds and everything else is still loud and clear, but it does help your FPS a bit. So I recommend turning that on low. Then go down to and go to subtitles and make sure you have everything inside of this menu off or all the way to the left. Our goal here is to make sure we're getting the best performance as possible, not having extra subtitles taking up any performance or dropping our FPS at all. And then visualize sound effects. I recommend turning this on even if you are on console because it has such a good competitive edge to it. And you can third party fights in games so easily by having this on because you will see gunshots and not even hear them. So I recommend you keep that on. And for the rest of all of this, this is all just personal preference. And now we're just going to move over to our game settings. So your matchmaking region, make sure you have this set manually, not on auto. The reason why you want it set manually is because you want to be able to lock in that server you're using and you don't want it switching in between servers. And as you see, NA East and NA Central are pretty close in ping, but sometimes that fluctuates. And Fortnite sometimes will throw me on Central servers when it will, for a split second, have lower ping. So I always come in here and I have this on automatic or obviously whatever type of server you want to play on. I bounce in between the two. And now we're going to come down to the movement tab. We're going to go down to mantle activation. So you're going to want to have this on hold jump. The reason why is because you want to be able to control whenever you are mantling. So if I'm just pressing forward and holding forward, it would just be mantling for me. And sometimes this would get me eliminated in game. So now you have to double click anytime you want to be able to mantle. And that is super, super important, especially in game that you're mantling when you actually want to mantle, not just when you're holding forward. And make sure you also have press jump on hurdle activation as well. And then we're going to come down a few. And I just wanted to note, we're just going to be skipping any settings that I deem personal preference. You can check those out. Just want to save you as much time as possible and show you the only important stuff. So come down here down to preferred item slots and you can go ahead and copy what I I have here. These are the best preferred item slots and most pros use similar preferred item slot settings to mine. Now you can do whatever you want here, but the only thing that I absolutely recommend is that loadout slot number one is your shotgun. Okay. Because you want to be able to put your builds away and instantly get your shotgun out at the ready. Then we're going to come down to the building category and you want to make sure you have your reset building choice on. Some people think that this doesn't matter, but for example, if I put my builds away with my floor selected and then I pull my builds out again, it automatically goes to my wall. The reason why 
why that is so important is because, for example, if you are box fighting with somebody and you go to edit a wall just like this and you go to take a shot, you can instantly pull your builds out and then reset your wall really, really quick. Now, if I was selected on, let's say, my stair right here and I try to reset my stair, I'm going to just be resetting this pre-edit option right here. You don't want that. want to make sure you can reset your walls really quick after you're done editing. And that's just a really quick side tip. If you're not resetting with your builds out on your walls, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage in box fights. Make sure you're doing so, especially if you're on controller, because you want to pull those builds out and be able to reset them concisely, okay? And right below reset building choice is disable pre-edit option, what I just mentioned. You definitely want to have this on, and what this allows you to do is pre-edit any of your builds, but that doesn't really sound like a helpful thing. Well, in-game, it really isn't too practical unless you're trying to be really sweaty, but the reason why you want this setting on is because when you turn this setting off, you get a terrible edit delay on controller. And if you swap it between having them on and off and try to hit some edits, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a big delay there. So make sure you have this setting off. Then turbo building, of course, keep this on and auto confirm edits. I recommend that you put this on both. It's pretty self-explanatory, but the reason why I keep mine only on edit is because I have a controller scroll wheel, as you can see here. But if I didn't have this controller scroll wheel, I would have this setting on both because what this setting allows you to do is press your edit button and then press your select and let go. And it instantly confirms it for you. And obviously the same thing for whenever you're resetting as well. Then we're just going to be scrolling down here all the way down until we see NVIDIA highlights. Now you console players won't have this, but for PC players, make sure you turn this off. You don't want NVIDIA recording for you in the background of your gameplay. That's going to take up some horsepower of your PC. And same thing with peripheral lighting. And if you PlayStation players will understand what this is as well, just go ahead and turn this off. Then tap to search slash interact. This is objectively better than pressing and holding to search a chest. All you have to do is tap it once and it continues to search it for you. So go ahead and turn this on. Now for the FOV minimum and the FOV maximum, this is a brand new setting that was just added into the game. And I recommend you take these and you turn these all the way to the max. And what this allows you to do is whenever you're in game and you're sprinting or you're mantling or hurtling over different objects like this, your FOV will change. And that also goes for driving any type of vehicle and a couple other scenarios in game. It doesn't change your actual FOV because Epic Games doesn't want you to be able to do that. Uh, but whatever you're sprinting and everything like that, you want to make sure you can get the highest FOV you possibly can in the game. So definitely make sure you have both of these guys turned to max. And then right below there, you want to make sure you have all of your recording replays off, especially if you're trying to get higher FPS and lower input delay. But unless you actually use these, you could leave them on, but this will get you a lot more performance in game. And right below the replays, you have energy saving mode. You don't want either of these on. This will hinder your FPS and your power consumption of your system. You definitely don't want that. You want as much power to go to your system to get the highest FPS you possibly can. So make sure you have both of those off. But guys, do you ever feel like there's something missing with you playing Fortnite? Like, and I'm being serious. You ever be playing Fortnite? You're just super tired and that kind of makes you not good at the game. Well, yeah, I hate that too. So that's why I partnered up with Mantis Sleep to sponsor today's part of the video. Mantis Sleep makes the literal best sleep masks in the world. Mantis Sleep's goal is literally to get people to have better lives through better sleep and to take regular naps. And this is the best way to do it. They have tons of different options to choose from, but my favorite in particular is the Manta Sleep Mask Sound. This sleep mask has razor thin Bluetooth speakers so you can listen to ASMR music or a podcast while you're trying to fall asleep. Like it's literally genius. Like I, who doesn't want that? I wish I knew about this earlier. And also the adjustability on these masks are absolutely incredible. And not to mention the Velcro that's on this mask is super small and it's not prickly at all. It won't get caught in your hair or anything. And these C-shaped eye cups are absolutely amazing because it doesn't give you any eye pressure, which allows you to get better sleep. And they're also really squishy and adjustable, like you see here. And my personal biggest worry with a sleep mask is if it gets really hot while you sleep. But that is the furthest thing from the truth with Manta sleep masks. The material used is super light, very breathable, and extremely soft and comfortable. And these masks are a 100% blackout, meaning I can't see any light at all or what's in front of me and even my recording lights to be able to record this video. So do yourself a favor and start getting more sleep by checking out Manta sleep in the description and use code takeoff for an extra 10% off of your Manta sleep mask. And again, a huge thank you to Manta sleep. But now let's go ahead and continue on with the video. And now we're going to come over to the game UI tab. Now, if you want your damage numbers to look like the OG damage numbers, or you just want them to look like mine, you can go ahead and copy these settings here. I think they look the nicest in my opinion and clearest and easiest to see. And then the rest in here is pretty much just personal preference, except the runtime performance stats for creative. You can turn this off. If anything, it just helps your FPS having this off in creative. And now moving on to the touch and motion, make sure you come here and turn everything 
anything off or to the left. This is for the gyro options and you don't want your system or your console constantly searching in the background for a compatible gyro controller. So make sure you just have all of this off here. Then for the keyboard and mouse sensitivities, uh, if you want to know what mine are, here you go. But I don't really play keyboard and mouse ever, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, all of this is personal preference and then we'll just skip that. Now, I do see some of you guys picking up some controller scroll wheels for yourselves and you guys are asking how you actually use them. So I'll go ahead and show you how I have mine bound here. I do have the middle mouse button from the scroll wheel. This is also an attachment here. I have this bound to my sprint. So on my controller, I just press this little button right here, which is a part of my controller scroll wheel attachment. And I can just sprint real easy and I get to keep all of my D-pad binds as well. So as you can see on the screen for my keyboard and mouse controls, I have sprint as the middle mouse button there. Then to set your controller scroll wheel up properly, come down to building edit and you want to set your building edit to scroll wheel down and then your reset building edit to also scroll wheel down. Then once you're in game, you can successfully scroll wheel to reset your builds on controller and you'll be able to sprint just like this with just tapping this button here. But now moving on to the controller options, which is probably why most of you guys are here. So we're going to start at the very top and I'm going to tell you guys what are the important settings to change on this tab. And first up, controller auto run. You're definitely going to have this on. This frees up your down left stick bind. So yeah, of course, you're definitely going to have this on and then build immediately for builder pro. Definitely have this on as well. So you don't have any of that input delay whenever you're building. Then your edit hold time. This doesn't matter whatsoever. If you're still pressing and holding your B or circle button to edit any of your builds, you just have terrible controller binds. And we're going to change that further into the video. We're going to talk about controller binds. So don't worry about your controller edit hold time because that's not going to be relevant to whatever controller binds that you're going to be using. Then for the slide hold time, I recommend 0.070 seconds. This is the perfect in between of crouching and sliding when I actually just want to crouch and whenever I just want to slide. As you can see, I can crouch whenever I want to, whenever I'm running, and I can slide whenever I want to, whenever I'm running. It's the perfect in-between, and it's the fastest, in my opinion. Then reset camera axis. This is for a gyro setting. I don't know why it's here. Same thing for reset camera time. None of these guys matter, so you can just turn this off or all the way to the left. And then vibration. Make sure you have this off. The reason why you want this off is because if you have a controller that's vibrating and you're on linear settings, which you should be because linear is the best, and we'll get to that, uh, it's kind of hard to hit shots from long range. So I highly, highly recommend that you turn your vibration off so you can get those nice, precise, linear aim on controller. And you're not going to have anything screwing you up or messing you up or vibrating or anything like that. I recommend you turn it off because it can hurt you whenever you're trying to aim, especially long range. Now coming down to quick weapon beta. Now this thing is absolutely trash, unfortunately. You know, Epic Games was trying to actually cook here, but unfortunately they burnt the stove, man. Nothing good came out of this because quick weapon Weapon beta is pretty much a quick weapon option for controller players. Now, as you can see in the bottom right, of course, you have to scroll through your inventory just like this on controller, but they tried to combat that with pressing a button and then selecting whatever weapon that you want from your inventory. But with this comes a bad delay in between switching your weapons. I don't care how fast you are. I've tested it extensively and this setting is just not any good because there's a big input delay and I kept dying in game because of it. But kudos to Evan Games for actually giving it a try and adding this to the game but unfortunately it is just not good so make sure you have it on custom only and just don't use any of this stuff here and now we're gonna come down to the sensitivity tab now for your build and edit mode sensitivities i recommend you keep those anywhere from 2.0 to about 2.4 that's gonna be the best sweet spot that most pro controller players use and i've been using 2.0 2.0 for probably about two years now i haven't changed this for in a while and i highly highly recommend it now if you're gonna change your build mode sensitivity down a little bit also change your edit mode sensitivity. Keep both of these consistent with each other because it builds that muscle memory. Some controller players play with a higher build mode sensitivity and a lower edit sensitivity, and they've been doing so for years. But if you're not used to it yet, it's a very, very long learning curve. So I recommend that you keep both of these consistent and just learn that muscle memory together with both of those. Then of course, we're definitely going to want to use advanced options. And we're going to come down here to our horizontal and our vertical speeds. Now, most pro controller players that play linear are going to play anywhere from 40 to 50%, but 50% is super, super fast. And I really don't recommend anything above 43. That's where I found most of the success when it comes to good aim and consistent building and editing with maybe your pickaxe out or maybe your shotgun out. I don't recommend anything above that. And even so, I keep mine at 4040 and obviously don't have these any different than each other. Keep these guys consistent. If you change one, change the other. Then down here on our boosts, don't use any boosts or boosts 
boost ramp time none of this will help this pretty much speeds up and slows down your linear curve of your joystick and it definitely takes a long time to learn people that use it are really really good on it but it's because they've been using it for a long time but even still i like that flat linear curve that's really easy to determine where your aim is going you want it to be nice and precise and not having it slow up and speed down by itself and that also goes for instant boost while building want to make sure i have this off then if you want absolute beams on controller use 11 11 percent on both your vertical and horizontal ads speed this is the best ads sensitivity i have ever tried and i've been using 11 percent for the longest time now i don't even know how long it is 100 the best and then of course for the boosts we don't want that except the boost ramp time we're gonna want to put this up to 0.20 seconds this is my secret to getting beams on controller and i really mean that what the boost ramp time does is whenever you're trying to get a long range ar shot with linear on on a low dead zone it slows down your linear curve just a little bit just to be able to get those really precise movements on linear and it's really nice to have and it will help you hit one tap beams just like this if you're trying to very very easily on controller so i highly recommend it now look dampening time i recommend you keep this at zero but sometimes putting this up to about four to six percent this can help you hit long range ar shots or medium range smg shots and stuff like that it can help because it dampens your linear curve a little bit but like i said i like to keep my aim very consistent so i recommend that you do the same and keep it at zero seconds and then of course i've been talking about it this whole video but look and put curve make sure you're on linear man if you're on exponential you're just doing yourself a disservice make sure you're on linear it's better for building it's better for mechanics and it's also really good for having good aim as well but if you're already used to exponential and you really don't want to switch to linear i still recommend that you do but you can stay on exponential but you just won't be able to achieve your full potential with building and editing on controller then your aim assist strength keep that at 100 man you want to make sure you get all the aim assist you possibly can then come down to your dead zones now your left dead zone i recommend that you keep that a little bit high somewhere around 15 to 20 percent and the reason why is because you don't want to accidentally be moving your character when you're not meaning to especially if you're on a ledge or something or if you have stick drift you're just going to be walking off ledges and stuff like that you don't want that so make sure you keep that anywhere from about 15 to 20 percent dead zone then for your right stick i recommend you keep this anywhere from five to about eight percent now some people like to play somewhere up in about the 12 percent area and that's still okay but it is kind of personal preference of what you're used to but me personally for testing controller settings for years now i like to keep mine at about five to six percent then foot controller do not turn this on some people say to keep this on because it gives you a better input delay no that's just not true this is going to be constantly searching for a compatible foot controller in the background while you're trying to play fortnite so there's no reason to keep this on make sure you have this off and as well turn both of these all the way down to one percent you don't want any of that being used now we're going to move our way into controller binds now i'm going to quickly run down in my controller binds so you can see what i have now i'm not going to be talking about every single controller bind in this video just for the sake of time i don't want to be wasting too much of your time here but i am going to tell you what settings you should be using for what controller play style that you actually use now first up i don't recommend playing on any type of preset now i would recommend doing custom then for controller platform you can use generic if you'd like but otherwise go ahead and select whatever controller that you use obviously i'm an elite series 2 which is a compatible series x or a series s controller then for you controller players that don't use paddles or don't play claw i recommend that your down left stick be your building edit and your down right stick be your switch mode slash edit and then a as your jump and obviously the goal is is to not take our fingers off our right joystick as much as possible so obviously you're gonna have to replace your crouch with your b button then the rest of the settings i'm going to talk about will apply for you in this video then if you use two paddles i recommend your right paddle be your edit and your left paddle be your build mode and your down right stick be your jump and for the rest of your binds just go ahead and copy for what i have on my controller then of course if you use four paddles just like me i recommend that your top right paddle be your edit your top left paddle be your build mode your bottom left paddle to be your pickaxe and your bottom right paddle to be your reload and for you claw players what i recommend is that your y be your edit your x be your build mode your down left stick be your jump your b be your pickaxe and your a be your reload now whatever controller play style that you play if you have to rewind the video and slow it down a little feel free to do so but we're going to talk about the rest of the controller settings that we're going to use no matter what controller play style that you use now one thing that you absolutely have to do is come down to switch mode slash edit and i want you to bind this somewhere on your controller on a bind that you don't usually press often and for me that's going to be somewhere on my d-pad and for most of you it's also going to be somewhere on your d-pad so i recommend that you bind this somewhere on your d-pad and once you do that come all the way down here to just switch mode not
not switch mode slash edit and make your switch mode bind your main build menu bind. And as you can see in my gameplay here, it says that I edit with my D-pad, but that is not true. I actually edit with A, but my A button is bound to a paddle on the back of my controller, obviously, like I said earlier. And the way I pull out my build mode is I press my X button, which is my top left paddle as well here. So why do I keep switch mode slash edit bound to this D-pad? It's because it also gets rid of a controller edit delay, especially if you're on console. I know it's a little bit confusing, but once you turn it on, you'll understand why I said to add it because it's very helpful. And next, we're just going to keep on scrolling down until we find our edit mode selections here. Now, obviously, we're going to select with our right trigger like the default settings. But one thing that you guys absolutely have to change is to confirm with your left bumper. That is the best confirm bind. And of course, you want to reset with your bumper as well. If you don't have a controller scroll wheel, it is absolutely objectively the best reset and confirm binds on your whole entire controller. You'll be able to get the fastest edits and the fastest confirms possible with these. And obviously your edit bind is going to be here too. And like I said earlier, just go ahead and re-listen to what I recommended for what play style you have. And then the rest really is just personal preference. Just go ahead and go ahead and bind whatever you'd like to. Obviously the gyro settings are here too. You don't need to bind anything here, but that's going to wrap it up for the controller settings menu. Alrighty guys. So that's all I have for you. But before we go, I did want to thank Mantis Sleep again for sponsoring today's video. Guys, make sure you go down below and check them out. They are seriously awesome and make sure that you're using that 10% off discount code. And guys, like I mentioned earlier about a video lowering your input delay and increasing your FPS, I'm going to link it right here for you console players and PC players. There was a ton of comments saying it helped a lot for a lot of people. So if you want to get better FPS and lower input delay, go ahead and click this video and I'll see you in there. Thanks again for watching to the very end and much love. Peace.